Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Hi, I'm Kalina, and welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That, where we kind of talk about movies. Um, One, I'm using we again in the royal sense, because if you're an avid fan of the show, you can tell. My co-host Eleanor is not here, which I will be honest, I'm noticing is becoming a habit of hers. So if you guys see me posting, you know, applications for a new co-host in the next couple of weeks, please respond. I'm very interested in that. Um, also, if I sound like I'm dying, that's because I feel like I'm dying. And I was like, you know what, this is a great time to record an episode. And I think it's going to be a long episode because I am actually living up to our tagline of we kind, where we kind of talk about movies for once. And I'm talking about a movie. And I think as long as we talk about like one movie every three months, we're fine. So this is this is my um contribution to the to the cause. The cause is the show that I do and I make the rules for. But anyway. Also I think this is a good movie. This is fun because it was a recommendation. Um and then also I don't think Eleanor and I I don't think I would have watched this movie if it wasn't recommended to me, and I don't think Eleanor and I would have watched this together. Um, for a variety of reasons we'll get into. I think you will tell very quickly what my main beef with this movie is. I don't know why I'm burying the lead, so to speak, um, because it is in the title. I'm talking about The Departed, which is a, according to the Wikipedia page, which I will read to you now, it is a 2006 American epic crime thriller film directed by Martin Scorsese. So, If you know Scorsese movies, if you're a film buff, so to speak, you'll kind of get the vibe of this. It's got a really interesting cast. It's um, Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson, Mark Wahlberg's in there. We don't like him. Um, Martin Sheen, Alec Baldwin. So, good little cast. Um, Vera Farmiga? Farmiga? I don't know how to pronounce that, but she's the lady in here. And when I say the lady, I mean there's kind of really just one lady, and it's her. Um, so very much a movie of its time, I will say. Um, it is a remake of a 2002 Hong Kong film called Internal Affairs. It is also very loosely based on the Boston Winter Hill Gang. And so the character, I will be referring to the characters by the actors' names because I don't ever know anyone's names when I watch a movie. So Matt Damon's character is Colin Sullivan. He's based on a real-life corrupt FBI agent. Whereas Jack Nicholson's character, Frank Costello, is based on Irish-American gangster Whitey Bulger. So this is a mob movie. I will give you... It takes place in Boston. Um, basically, long story short, Jack Nicholson is a mob boss. Um, is a, the Irish mob boss. He sends Matt Damon, who he kind of took under his wing when Matt Damon was young. He sends Matt Damon as, a, as like a mole in the police. So Matt Damon enrolls in the Massachusetts State Police. Becomes a great well-respected police officer, but the whole time he's feeding information back to Mr. Nicholson. At the same time, the police send Leonardo DiCaprio undercover in the same Irish mob. So they don't realize this at first, and once they realize, it's kind of, you know, tension is created as they try to figure out who the other person is without getting caught themselves. Um, that's the long story short. Um, I would like to say there's like a trigger warning here just for, there's going to be talking about guns and violence and self-harm. This is, you know, a mob gang movie, so it has come with the territory. So, you know, if those are, if those are topics that might be triggering to you, it's not too heavy, but it will come up. So just proceed with caution. Um, all I know going into this movie was that Leonardo DiCaprio was in it and Matt Damon was in it and that it was described to me as Leonardo DiCaprio is the good guy and Matt Damon is the bad guy and for me I was like just because Matt Damon's working for the mob I don't think that makes him a bad guy like sorry yeah I don't think that makes him a bad guy inherently however as the movie goes on I agree that he's a bad guy not because he's working for the mob but because he kind of sucked as a person that's just me personally my main beef with this movie is it's two and a half hours and it didn't need to be two and a half hours we could have told this story an hour and a half. We could have... I mean, like, if I'm being generous and you want to keep in some artsy shots and a couple plot lines, probably two hours, or, like, genuinely you could have cut an hour out this movie. 
And I think I would have liked this movie a lot if it had been an hour and a half because it wouldn't have taken so long to get to a point where I thought the tension was interesting and the tension was like engaging because for the first hour and a half of the movie I was just like what is the point like I don't I don't I didn't really care so I was a little I was a little critical at the beginning so I think if it was shorter and kind of cut straight to the chase a little earlier I would have liked it better um and then also I thought this brought up an interesting point because a minute and 32 seconds into the movie I remember this time because I paused it to write this note um and like part of that time was like titles and stuff like that so not even oh uh, i would say not even a minute into the movie i heard the n-word and then it came again later and then the first time was said by jack nicholson in like one of the opening lines of the movie and then the next time i think it was said by mark Wahlberg's character who again i didn't well, i didn't like his character at all um and then later in the movie they were racist to the mob was racist to mark Wahlberg's character was a cop then later in the movie the mob members were being like discriminate discriminated against Puerto Ricans, even though like there were no Puerto Ricans there. And then later, later in the movie, Jack Nicholson says a slur to Chinese people. And like I just think it's an interesting conversation about like like to me, if I told people about this movie, I would remember that stuck out. Whereas the person who recommended this movie to me did not mention that. And like while obviously it's not the defining point of the movie in any way, shape or form, it doesn't really hold any stakes um because it doesn't hold any stakes i don't really think it was necessary especially because not that this is better but like they were except for the case of the chinese people um they were never like being discri- like discriminating against people to their face they were just like talking generally about black people and about puerto ricans who weren't there in the scene at all as a matter of fact i think there is one black person in this movie it's anthony anderson he plays a minor role um so that was fun. Anyway, um, so we get we enter the movie. We see Jack Nicholson. He's doing this little narration. One thing I thought was very cool was the whole time his face was like shrouded in like we never really get a clear picture of his face. It's always shrouded in shadow, or we see him from behind or from the side. But he's like going to the store and he kind of hustles the store owner to pay him, and then he hits on the store owner's underage daughter. And I know the child is underage because he says in the scene, "Have you started your period yet?" Which, you know, after it was the N-word and then that back-to-back. Off to a great start for Nicholson. And then Nicholson sees this kid sitting at the counter. And he's like, oh, are you blah, blah, blah's kid? Do you live with your grandmother? And the kid's like, yeah. So then he makes the store owner give him milk and, like, cereal and a bunch of food and sends the kid on his way. And he takes the kid under his wing. Kid turns into young Matt Damon. However, I would just like to say personally, call me radical, I don't think him feeding the child made up for the are you have you started a period yet comment that's just me personally moving on also that kid should be in school but instead he's hanging around the mob boss he goes to take then we see him in police academy he's like taking his test he's doing his physicals yada 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 one thing i also liked about this movie from the beginning was that leonardo dicaprio and matt damon never crossed paths like i thought it was i going in i thought this was going to be a case of like they like they've met each other and they even if it's like peripherally they know who each other is they've seen each other but like they're never even in the same room up until i want to say about halfway through the film if not later um so that's really interesting because all of the tension that's created is just to us as the audience because we know something that the characters don't because at this point no one in the cops knows that there's a mole in the cops and no one in the mob knows that there's a mole in the mob in the mob um so i think that's really interesting and so we cut to matt damon he's in the police academy and then we also get scenes of leonardo dicaprio in the police academy like i said they're never in the same place so like we'll see matt damon taking the police exam and then matt damon playing rugby and then we'll see leonardo dicaprio taking the police exam and then leonardo dicaprio doing his physical with um anthony anderson's one of the people he meets while he's in the police academy which will come into play later um and then there's no clear timeline on this which i don't like uh like after we jump forward i think like 20 years from when we see matt damon as a kid to him in the police academy but then after that and he's part of the massachusetts state police but then after that there's like i'm not really clear on what the timeline is in terms of like graduation from academy 
to he joins this special investigation unit um and he becomes like he works with it and eventually comes pretty high up in there meanwhile leonardo DiCaprio's brought in and we've get we get martin sheen and mark Wahlberg. martin sheen's the old older fellow who's in charge of leonardo dicaprio he's in charge of the undercover agents essentially and mark Wahlberg's like his second hand man and basically they're like leonardo dicaprio your uncle was in the mob aren't you just here to be a spy for the mob inside the cops and leonardo dicaprio's like no and you think he's getting kicked out of the police for that reason but we come to find out in a slightly later scene which is a couple scenes later not too long basically this is where they come up with the idea to send him undercover so they give him like an assault charge and they send him for jail and like i think the quote is like they're gonna send him for jail for long enough that no one will be suspicious and then when he gets out of jail he's supposed to like use his family contacts to get into the mob and they're like okay great yada 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 the thing is no one but martin sheen and mark Wahlberg know that Leonardo DiCaprio is undercover. So to everyone else in the police and the outside world as well, Leonardo DiCaprio just is like a disgraced former police cadet. Which is dangerous. And also, like, I think it's a lot more high stakes for Leonardo DiCaprio because if he gets found out by the mob, he gets dead. Whereas if Martin Damon gets found out by the cops, he just gets, you know, arrested and goes to jail, yada, yada, yada. Like, obviously not ideal for him, but not, it's not life or death as it is for Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, personally, I'm not, not a mob supporter. Um, that's a joke, of course. But like, uh, um, like I said, I don't like Matt Damon. Jack Nicholson did come to grow on me, which we'll talk about reasons why. Um, but so then we, we, so Matt Damon's in, like, the special investigation unit, but, like, on, you know, on the cop end, obviously, he's not one of the undercovers. So his head guy, the guy in charge of him, is Alec Baldwin. So this cast, I don't think, aged super well, like, at all. But it is a very interesting cast, especially for the time I can see, like, why this got a lot of draw. Also, this one, Best Picture at the Oscars, and I'm trying to figure out why. It was a good movie. I don't think it was Best Picture worthy, so I would, I'm interested to know what the other films were, what the other nominees were for that year um and then mark Wahlberg just plays this very aggressive character who he like i said he said the n-word the second time he's very abrasive um and then oh we do get the dropkick murphys when we see when we get the title card the departed also i don't know why the movie's called the departed i watched the whole movie and i'm still unclear what it has to do with anything but anyway we get the title card the dropkick murphys play so that movie did it did redeem itself for me a little bit at this point and then it, it went downhill after that again, but... Also, another thing I was unclear on was, like, does everyone in the mob know that Matt Damon is, like, in on their side? Because he did grow up with Jack Nicholson, and, like, you know, the guy took him under his wing. And it just seems interesting to me that if the people knew Leonardo DiCaprio's family was in the mob, they wouldn't notice that there was this kid that was hanging around him. But it does seem like Nicholson planted him in the mob so maybe he started that idea early so like they had some distance you know like he was playing the long con here and they weren't like really seen together in public and then we get this scene where matt damon yes matt damon is in an elevator and there's this lady in the elevator and he starts chit-chatting with her and like i hate elevator scenes in movies because no one talks in an elevator like that Especially if you don't know each other, because it's so, it's like impossible to hide a conversation in the elevator, you know what I mean? Not that you're trying to, excuse me, not that you're trying to hide your conversation, but like, you want some privacy when you're, there's, there's an expectation of privacy to an extent when you're listening, when you're like chit-chatting to someone in public where people won't, they're not going out of their way to hear you. If they hear you, it happens, but they're not going out of their way to hear you, whereas in an elevator, it's unavoidable, they're going to hear you. And then... He's like flirting with her and she gets out the elevator on a different floor and she's like, yeah, I'm a psychiatrist. I work with um, criminals and cops, yada, yada, yada. And he's holding the door open. And I did like this because the two extras in the scene are like looking at each other and they're still in the elevator. They're like, what is this man doing? Because he's just holding the elevator open for like three or three to four minutes, just talking to her and flirting with her. Um, But he does say a cute line, which is, I'll stab someone in the heart with an ice pick if it got me dinner with you. So like. I get why it worked on her, but I don't get why we needed this romantic plot line. And if we had cut it out, this movie would have been better and over sooner. Then, like, 
I don't agree with this trope in movies, but you know how they always joke about like the dead wife trope, especially in movies of this time. I think that would have made more sense because I think the only reason the romance existed was to give this some tension because then Leonardo DiCaprio later ends up going to see the same psychiatrist and they end up having an affair, which one like I don't we haven't seen enough of this lady for me to be like, what? Like, why does everyone want to date her? Is basically the moral of the story. You know what I mean? Um, and then, like, it creates tension to the audience because we know that she's also dating Matt Damon, who's, you know, the spy, the other spy. But, like, they don't know about each other. And it never, it only comes to head at the very end, which, like, could have been delivered or, like, processed. I can't think of the right word right now. But, like, could have been uh, um, achieved that's it. it could have been achieved in another way without having written in this character just for her to you know bounce back and forth between these men, two men essentially however when Leonardo DiCaprio does go to see her we get a very famous scene which I've seen before which is him basically saying he's going to her because he's anxious and he needs medication and she won't give him medication and he's like so what do you do you're just going to send a man out back onto the street to get smacked because you won't give him pills and then she pulls two pills out of her, her desk to give to him and he's like two pills why don't you just give me a bottle of scotch and a handgun so i've seen a lot of people talk about that in terms of like that's really what the medical system is like and it's a good representation of how they don't really help um which is a conversation i don't think i'm equipped to have but i do think it is an interesting conversation and i did really like that scene i thought it was a good scene in terms of acting and setup and moving the story along um, also, I, I think part of the reason I wasn't terribly impressed by this movie is I've seen better performances from all of these actors. Personally, my favorite Matt Damon performance is when he voices the horse spirit in the movie Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron, which I watched entirely too many times when I was younger. So, basically, the Irish mob stole some, like, computer microprocessors, I think it was, and they're gonna sell them to this, um, a Hong Kong triad, according to the Wikipedia page. And this is when the two, when Matt Damon and Leonardo DiCaprio become aware of each other. They don't become aware of who the other person is, um, but they're aware that there's a mole on either end. At the same time, Leonardo DiCaprio learns that Jack Nicholson, the mob boss, is an FBI informant, which I wasn't trusting this bit of information, but he, he gets told that he's an FBI informant, and that's why he never gets caught for any of his crimes, yada, yada, yada. And... So now the tension's really high because they both know there's a mole on either end. And also, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, Leo, not only does no one else know he's a cop, they deleted his, like, file from the database. So if you look him up, it's it's like he was never in the system. So, like, so like the only two people who know he's undercover are Martin Sheen and Mark Wahlberg. So they're the only two people who can vouch for him. And then, now that they're aware... Matt Damon goes to meet Jack Nicholson in a movie theater, and later DiCaprio is trying to figure out the identity of the mole and the police, so he's sitting in the back of the theater trying to catch a glimpse of Matt Damon's face, but he never gets it, so he follows him out when he leaves. And this is the only time they have crossover until the end, but they never actually see each other. It's just Leo tailing Damon down a dark alley, and then... One thing I thought was really cool in this scene is Leonardo DiCaprio has a gun, so like kind of reflecting that he is on the side of law and order, because, you know, not not that I'm saying guns are for law and order, but that is the preferred weapon choice, you know, that is the issued weapon of the police. So he's got the gun, whereas Matt Damon's walking down this alley, and he realizes he's being followed, and he's got a knife in his hand, so like he's more of the, you know, he's the mob man. And Matt Damon's hiding, and he, he he's waiting for the person who's following him, who's Leo, to come around the corner, and someone comes around the corner and he stabs him, and it's not Leo, so he kills this man and has to run off, and then they're like, oh my god, and he has to act all surprised, when they're like, oh, they almost got a glimpse of the, the mole inside the police, but they don't know who it is, and then he gets put in charge of finding the mole, so he has to find himself, and you know what he's not gonna do? Find himself. We get to the most shocking scene, I think, for me personally, which is that DiCaprio goes to meet Martin Sheen, who's the old fella in charge of him. But Matt Damon figures this out, or has, I think he has the old guy followed, because he's, you know, supposed to be follow, finding the mole. So he's like, oh, if I follow the old guy, I'll figure out who the mole inside the mob is. And so then the gang, so then the mob find out, and the mob go to find out who the mole is. 
And so while Leonardo DiCaprio is meeting Martin Sheen at 344 Washington Street, this will become important later, he gets a call from his fellow mob members being like, you got to meet us at 314 Washington Street. Um, well, you know, that's where the mole is. So then Leo obviously has got to get out of there. He's going to get murdered. So Martin Sheen sends him out like the back fire escape. And when the mob comes in, guns are blazing. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what, what mole? And Leonardo DiCaprio goes down this back fire escape, runs around the corner, and a body drops in front of him, and he's covered in blood. And the body is Martin Sheen. And I was expecting the old man to die, like you could tell it from the scene, but the guys came in, like, the mob came in, like, guns blazing. I was not expecting them to throw him out a window. And for him to die right in front of DiCaprio, who, again, Martin Sheen is one of two people in existence who know DiCaprio is undercover for them. And two, the other fellow, Mark Wahlberg, quits in the next scene. Quit. So, like, he and he's not seen for the rest of the movie, essentially. So, Leonardo DiCaprio is just on his own trying to figure out who the mole is and not get murdered and has no support whatsoever. And Matt Damon kind of t- ends up taking over Martin Sheen's role. And so he's trying to find out who the mole is. So he calls the mole off of Martin Sheen's phone. But Leonardo DiCaprio is smarter than that, doesn't reveal his name or anything, but he, so they have a little chit-chat, so they know what the other person sounds like. But then Leonardo DiCaprio is kind of, you can tell he doesn't trust this, so he hangs up the phone. Um, and one of, there's, a, so after Martin Sheen gets thrown out the building, there's this shootout between the cops that are staking out the building and the mob that's there, and Leonardo DiCaprio is like, oh my god, I just got here, what happened? This is crazy. And one of the mob guys gets shot. So they're hiding out this warehouse and the guy's dying and he calls Leonardo DiCaprio over and he's like, I told you to show up at 314 Washington Street, but you showed up at the correct address, 344 Washington. And I noticed that. But why do you think I never told anyone? And then he dies. Um, And then later on, after they're doing the death announcement on the TV, when they find his body, they're like, he was an undercover cop, which I'm still not entirely sure. Like, I'm assuming it is true because that's why he didn't rat at Leo. So, you know, there's more than one person undercover, which I think is interesting. Like, like the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, so to speak. But also, I'm still not entirely sure if that was, like, true he was undercover or if it was just because they were trying to make Jack Nicholson think they got the mole so then he wouldn't be suspicious of anyone anymore. Because he was suspicious of Leo earlier, and Leo passed his test, but, like, obviously he's still not 100% con- comfortable because he knows there's a mole in his ranks. Then we get to Matt Damon learning that Jack Nicholson is an FBI informant. So this is actually a true bit of information. So then he puts a tail on him when they're going to, like, the whole bunch of the mob, including Leonardo DiCaprio, is going to this warehouse to, like, pick up their cocaine because, you know, the mob things. Um, And then Jack Nicholson texts Matt Damon. He's like, you better get this tail off of me right now. And he's like, okay, fine. And meanwhile... Leonardo DiCaprio is texting where they're going. So Matt Damon, because Leonardo DiCaprio still thinks he's working with the cops. I don't think he realizes he's talking directly to Matt Damon, who's the mole. Uh, He doesn't trust Matt Damon, but he doesn't realize he's the mole yet. You know what I mean? So he texts him and then Matt Damon has the police show up at the warehouse and there's this big shootout, which I also wasn't expecting because it seems like one of those movies where like, you know, the bad guy wins it at the end of the day, the bad guy being Jack Nicholson in this case. But all his mob members are getting shot out, shot up yada 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 and then he gets shot and as he's like dying this warehouse Matt Damon finds him and they have like a confrontation Matt Damon's like you're really an FBI informant and Jack Nicholson's like I never ratted out anyone who they weren't going to catch anyway and Matt Damon's like do they know about me and to this moment to this day we still don't have a clear answer on whether they know about him or not I'm pretty sure they do but Jack Nicholson never really gives him a clear answer He's like, do they know about me? And he's like, I never ratted out anyone they weren't going to catch anyway. So, haha. Which, like, is not an answer, homeboy. Anyway, Matt Damon shoots him. And Jack Nicholson's girlfriend calls. And she's like, hello. And Matt Damon answers the phone. He's like, hello. And she's like, who's this? Where's Frank? And he goes, Frank got shot. Yeah, homeboy, by you. The call is coming from inside the house. Just like the call was coming from inside the house when you had to go look for the mole in the cops. That was you. And so... I don't really like how Matt Damon just got away scot-free. You see what I'm saying? Like, he deserved to suffer consequences because he was a sucky guy. 
Like there's one scene where one of the mom members gets pulled in for the gets pulled in for questioning and he pretends to be the guy's lawyer by putting on like a suit jacket and a briefcase, I think. He grabs a briefcase there for sure, and he goes in there and the guy's like, Are you my lawyer? And he goes, What do you think? That's not an answer. And if anyone ever says that to you, they're not your lawyer. So then he gets the information he wants, but it really he gets the information he wants and he also gets the guy to tip off. Jack Nicholson in this scene without showing his hand to the rest of the cops watching. But like he's just a scammy guy, so I don't like him. Um and Leonardo DiCaprio's like, oh so sorry, um Jack Nicholson gets shot and dies. The mob is kinda, you know, kaput. And Leonardo DiCaprio's like, Oh, I'm I'm obviously safe now because the mob is dead. There's no one to kill me. So he goes in Sorry, and he meets Matt Damon and he's like yada 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 i was the person undercover um and matt damon's like oh my goodness we're so glad you're safe this is crazy um let's get you paid can i get your like password so i can pull up your information because you're not in the system obviously and leonardo DiCaprio's like oh yeah it's just my name here's my name and matt damon's like oh you know what my computer is being stupid um i have to go to this another room i'll be right back and we'll get you paid and he goes to the other room basically what he goes to do is delete Leonardo DiCaprio's file so then he could get rid of him and no one will ever know he was actually working for the police so everyone will think he was actually in the mob and while he's gone Leonardo DiCaprio notices this clue that will take me too long to explain right now but basically just notices this piece of paper that indicates that that he gets he sees a piece of paper that Matt Damon could have only gotten from Jack Nicholson so he realizes that Matt Damon's the mole in the police so he leaves before Matt Damon comes back and then he oh finally matt damon's girlfriend comes back into play he um leaves her an envelope and tells her to open it if anything happens to him and then later on he mails something to matt damon's house and she's and um the girlfriend is living with him um at the time so she gets the package while matt damon's in the shower and she plays it and it's a tape and it's a tape because jack nicholson was an fbi informant he recorded all conversations he had so it's a tape of the conversation between matt damon and nicholson in the movie theater that reveals damon to be the mole and so now it's clear that leo has proof that matt damon is the mole and he's going to use it obviously also right before this scene i'm I'm like sorry in the same scene at the start of the scene she announces that she's pregnant and i don't think that first of all i don't think her being a girlfriend was necessary but, like, her being pregnant was not necessarily... Because then five minutes later, she's like, I'm... Le-, and she's obviously upset with him for being the mole. And she leaves. And he's like, wait, I can't explain. Which, I don't know how you explain you being undercover for the mob, right? Like, I don't know how you... I don't know how those two go together. But anyway. So, then, um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Matt Damon end up meeting at the same building that Martin Sheen got thrown off of. And Leonardo DiCaprio performs, like, a citizen's arrest. He's citizen's arrest. He's got Damon in handcuffs. He's got a gun to his head. And this is where it comes back into play from earlier. Anthony Anderson shows up because Leonardo DiCaprio called him. Because Anthony Anderson was working with Matt Damon's unit. But like I said, he and Leo were friends in the Academy. So Leo was like, look, you know who I am. You know I was in the Academy. I just need you to come with me while I take him in. Because I don't have... He didn't have the proof with him. And obviously no one would believe him because his file was deleted. So he's like, I need you to come with me and you you know who i am so anthony anderson doesn't shoot him or anything and they go down and they're in this old like abandoned building so anthony anderson goes down the stairs leonardo dicaprio matt damon are in the elevator like i guess said matt damon's in handcuffs they get to the floor door opens leonardo dicaprio gets shot in the forehead when i tell you i was not mentally prepared for leonardo dicaprio to get shot in the head it was almost as shocking as them throwing the man off the building and then it turns out this fellow who has not been important at any point in time other than for like some one-liners that Matt Damon was working with in the cops is like, do you think you're the only person Nicholson had undercover? So again, on both sides, the right hand did not know what the left hand was doing just in any scenario. And then Anthony Anderson comes down the stairs and Matt Damon's co-worker shoots him in the head too. And Matt Damon's like, he's, and then his other friend's like, we got, we got to look out for each other. Matt Damon's like, oh yeah. And then shoots him in the head. And then Matt Damon, again, getting all these accolades. I don't know why we're giving this man his flowers. He basically makes up the story about how everyone was undercover shooting and he had to shoot, he had to protect himself, yada, yada, yada. And he, but the one good thing he does, which is the only time I'll root for him in this movie, is he goes, but Leonardo DiCaprio, 
I'm recommending him for the merit of, sorry, the Medal of Merit. So, like, acknowledging that he was, in fact, a cop. So, at least in death, Leo got what he wanted, which I thought was a nice line, because he says, I just want my identity back. So, unfortunately, it took death, but he did get that back. Um, So, Matt Damon's, like, this great guy. Everyone's congratulating him. I'm like, this is a terrible movie. I don't know. Like, I was really liking the tension. We were finally getting to a point I thought was good just for this guy to win. Like, he's scammy. Um... And then we get a scene, Matt Damon comes home, he opens the door, and guess who's standing in his apartment? Mark Wahlberg. And this is the only time in my life I would root for Mark Wahlberg. He, Matt Damon starts to bargain with him, and Mark Wahlberg shoots him in the head. So, basically, everyone, you know, was just undercover. Um, it turns out that this i wasn't i wasn't clear on this at the end but according to the wikipedia page mark Wahlberg was also working for nicholson so just everyone's shooting everybody everyone's undercover at this point i wouldn't trust anyone in the cops or the mob personally because clearly they're all got uh, you know other motives or maybe all of the mob members are actually cops and then all the cops are actually mob members and that point they should just switch you know what i mean anyway um this movie had some, like, artsy shots that didn't make any sense. There's this one scene just randomly with Jack Nicholson doing cocaine and sleeping with these two women that I don't know why it needed to be in there. I don't really get the whole romantic subplot. So, like, I think if this movie was an hour and a half, it would be perfect and beautiful and wonderful. I believe in the art of storytelling. The art of the storytelling didn't really make sense. Like, these artsy shots didn't really make sense with the rest of the story because the rest of the story wasn't filmed like that. It was very, like... You know, it was more realistic. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a artsy film in any way, shape, or form. It just had these random shots, and I don't believe in reducing women to one thing. Like this movie doesn't pass the Bechdel test purely because I don't even think two women speak to each other in this movie, let alone speak to each other about something that's not a man. But like, I and I don't agree with reducing women to like the dead wife, or you know, just to further the story. But they wrote in a, a female character just to further the story anyway and create tension that was already there. So like we could have done without that um overall it was a movie it wasn't good it wasn't bad it was more good than bad it just took a while to get there but if you like scorsese films i think it's right up like it is very much a quintessential scorsese film um so i think you'll like it if you like any of those characters like i said i've seen better performances sorry any of those actors i've seen better performances from all of them but i do think it is a good at least for the time especially it was very you know a, 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 a cast that packed a punch so to speak anyway as i said i feel like i'm dying a little bit so i'm gonna go take some medication and sleep for till the cows come home uh hopefully eleanor will be back next week if not i will certainly be back next week and if you have any other suggestions that for movies that aren't two and a half hours please let me know and I will, we will watch them or I will watch them, but I don't think I'll be doing another two and a half movie for another year at least. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Have a great time. Thanks for listening. Don't quote me on that. One day we'll have an outro, but it's not today.